Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're doing something different. Today we're going to learn how to make a measuring tape watch. Yeah, this is definitely out of the box for us. Normally everything we do on this channel is bridal sewing related, but every now and then I like to toss in something fun that I think we would all enjoy. If you're new here, Bridal Sewing Techniques is a channel that's for someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche. Welcome aboard. So here's just a cheap little watch I picked up on Amazon. I'm going to link to it down below. Um, it comes in different colors. You can pick whatever you want. Um, here's kind of my little uh, list of supplies that are needed to, to make this watch. And this tool right here is a Taylor's Awl. And basically you hammer it and it's a little bitty hole punch. Now, spoiler alert. <laughs> This, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna struggle with this all a little bit. It is, uh, like 10 years old. <laughs> so it's not gonna work very well for this video. It does the job, um, but you're probably gonna want a sharper all. And then you're gonna hammer it on something like very old seasoned oak or a very hard plastic or something. Not anything near as soft as what I used. So anyways, you're gonna take your watch and yeah, it looks like we're destroying it, <laughs> but you're gonna cut the, um, the straps off it. Uh, keep the straps though, cause we're gonna need those. And see how it's got this bar um, on, the, on each end of the case. Um, when you go to purchase a watch, you don't have to purchase the one I linked to, but it, you know, if you're looking for one in a store or something, I found the easiest ones to work with are the ones with this little spinny bar. Um, so that's why I picked this one. So uh, you might want to look for one like that. And again, I just I just grabbed one on Amazon. I'm not specifically endorsing it. I don't know how great the quality is for that watch, but you know it's working for me just for uh, for this little project and something fun to wear. So here I'm just comparing the width of the measuring tape to the width of the bar on the case that it's going to be attached to um, so that I can see how much to trim it. Now when you make your measuring tape watch, obviously you can use any color measuring tape you want and you can also use the inches side or the centimeter side. Um, I have watches that are made both ways. Um, sometimes you just want more numbers and, and more lines going on and then you would probably want the centimeter side for that. So I'm just going to cut just a general length here. Um, also just, just a FYI, so when you're comparing kind of how this is going to look on my arm compared to yours, I do have a unusually small wrist. My wrist is only like 15 centimeters. So it is hard to find a watch that doesn't look silly on me. Um, most of the cases right now, the trend, the trend, I guess, as you've noticed is like a 40 millimeter case, which is, it's crazy big. Um, so with this one, you know, the case covers just about the whole top of my wrist, but it may not do that for you. It just depends on your wrist measurement. So definitely, um, I would say before you settle on a watch, you know, measure your wrist and measure the case size and make sure it's going to work for you. And you can see how I made these little tabs that slip right through. And now we're going to go sew. Very important points to note. 
you could use any thread color that you want. So you could use yellow if you wanted to match the band, or you could use black like I did. Um, you can use upholstery thread if you'd prefer. I used regular um, all-purpose thread and instead took, you know, four or five passes. Um, definitely set your machine on a long stitch length. So I put mine on four. If the stitch length is too close, you're essentially going to cut the measuring tape um, with your number of stitches and the band will break very easily. Also, you're going to want to start and stop your row of stitches every time in the same spot in the middle of the band and um, you're going to want to run off the edge. That way you don't have um, the ends of any of the stitches going on at the edge of the band. You want all that going on in the middle and all of your holes should line up. Uh, when you go back and forth, if, you're, if your sewing machine is adjusted well and everything, um, you shouldn't be making a lot of unnecessary punctures. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I am tapering the measuring tape part of the band um, to be similar in width to the original band. Um, the reason why I have to do it is because this has to slip through um, the, the latchy part that, that came with it. I'm sorry, I don't know the names of watch components, but you know what I mean, the little latchy part. It's gotta go through that, so we need to thin this out um, to be the correct width for that. So you're gonna see me try this on um, all throughout the process of making this watch because I don't want a lot of the extra um, band hanging off. I really want it to be pretty close uh, in fit. So I'm only going to go for like maybe three holes um, for it to be adjustable and the center hole would be my ideal fit. So I am just going to watch the fit of the band very closely. Um, and now I'm going to feed it through and I'm going to have to line up and put a little hole for this pin to go through um, so that I can loop this around through and, and sew this in place just like I did on the other side. Alright, so I'm going to take my tailors all and punch a hole. places like I did on the other side. Long stitch link, start and end in the middle of the band. I deserve it. I wear my watches like crazy tight and high up on my wrist. <laughs> I'm going to 
to seal the threads. Two reasons. One, I don't want them to fray, and the other one is I don't want them to get nasty. So this is going to kind of help waterproof them just a little bit so they stay cleaner. And I'm just going to run a bead of this hypo cement across each of the stitch lengths. Um, and then I'm just going to dab away any excess. show you a couple of different ways to make measuring tape watches because you know there's always more than one way <laughs> if you know me you know that's what I like to show the second style that I'm showing is actually with a bracelet style band on the watch which I prefer most of the time um, so basically you take the handy tape measuring tape sticker and you cut it and you place it on the bracelet band of the watch and then you use this product that I'm going to link to down below. Um, it's called Dimensional Magic. So think of like Mod Podge or something but it's actually a little bit stronger and thicker. Um, so you would paint that over it and then after it cures you would buff it down to a nice little shine. The problem that I have with this though is it does pick up um, stains like from the dyes in your clothes. The Dimensional Magic does. So if I were to wear this with black a lot like I do at work, um, it'll kind of pick up like a blue tinge on some of the edges. Um, so that's kind of sad but you know everything's got its pros and cons. Also link to that handy tape down below if I can find it online for you. I love sticking that kind of everywhere in my shop. And I've got one more watch style coming up for you. The next watch style that we're going to do involves um, the use of grommets. So those of you that have a grommet press or are handy with a hammer, um, you can buy the cases in like the jewelry section of craft stores, but I'll also link to them below if I can find them and do a couple of um, like the, the O-links and use the grommets. Now this one, um, the, the way that I connected it together was with a lobster claw, which I hated, so I'm not even picturing that for you. Um, but I did do it double, um, I doubled the tape so that that watch was stronger. So that's just another um, springboard for you to come up with a new idea for another measuring tape watch style. I hope this has helped you. If it did, please hit like, the thumbs up button. Please share this in your sewing groups and with your sewing friends. And also hit subscribe. I would love to have extra people in my BSD community um, where we're all learning together. Coming right up, if you're not used to Bridal Sewing Techniques channel, I've got our channel trailer so you can learn a little bit more about us and what we do here. Have a great day. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.